next step is getting Node-RED up and running. Let's start uh, coding. So one thing that we need to do when we um, take a look at the dashboard is we're going to have to open up a web viewer uh, to uh, the IP address that uh, the dashboard is going to be hosted on. And that's going to be your VM um, or your device or your Raspberry Pi. Here are my IP addresses, 192.168.0.168. And that's going to be necessary. Let's just remember that and tuck that away right now. So this is Node-RED. I've opened up Node-RED to 192.168.0, port 1880. That's what's important here. You want to go to port 1880, and um, it'll open up a dashboard. And here I've installed a number of other additional nodes. The node that I wanted you to install earlier can be installed through Manage Palette. And what you're looking for is the, the dashboard. Now, I've already installed it, but this is it. It's called Node-RED Dashboard version 2.8.2. Um, to install, you would click Install, and you could search for Dashboard and um, navigate your way to this guy and install it. So this is the, the program that's running. And there's two sides of this. There's the MQTT transmit to the cloud, and then there's the receive. So I wanted to test both directions, um, subscribing and publishing. So I'm just going to briefly go into um, some of the details here. So timestamp is just a timestamp node, and it basically just starting the process. And one thing I wanted to do here was I wanted to have this repeat. And right now, let's be aggressive and say that I want to inject data to IBM and Amazon every three seconds. So I'm just going to change the interval. Now, let's get right into Amazon, and then we're going to show you how to set up IBM. So on the Amazon node, I have a function node. And in that function node, I've created um, just a few lines of JavaScript. And basically, I'm, I'm setting a, a, a topic, um, and the topic here is called test. And message payload is um, basically that timestamp that was generated by the previous node. So this is the data that's coming in, and I stringify it and um, use JSON stringify and the message payload and just return the message. So this topic branch is interesting because that topic branch is created as soon as you instantiate this, this event. And Amazon recognizes that and treats that as a managed topic branch for your client ID. So there's nothing really magical here. The thing that um, this video is all about is what's different in configuring this to communicate to Amazon versus IBM. So let's, let's look at Amazon first. So in these scenarios, as you see, I've, I've downloaded a, a number of different nodes that allow me to instantly connect to AWS or Watson IoT, and they have a number of um, nodes that have been installed. I wanted to use the vanilla MQTT nodes. Um, both uh, for input and output. And I wanted to show you how to configure that. So if we look at Amazon um, first. So the server here I, I labeled um, AWS. And the topic branch that I'm, I'm interested in is test. For all of my uh, work, I set the quality of service on MQTT to 1. So we'll go over quality of service in another video. But for um, to make everything's, uh, everything here apples to apples, everything is set to QS1. So the server is um, very important that you get right here. So this is the um, server address that I'm using. I'm using US East 2 and port 883. That's going to be important, as well as the client ID. So if you remember, um, if we go back to um, AWS IoT, and we bring up that window. This is my client ID, Perry Mac. That was the device I created. I could also use demo one. The server address comes from uh, the server address. Basically, I'm I'm grabbing off of here. But there's a variety of places where you can grab that server address from uh, Amazon IoT. The next step here 
is to dig into the server. So we're going to click on this little pencil icon here. And if we go into security, um, actually, if we go into um, the TLS configuration, what you see here is a path. And the path is home Perry AWS and uh, Perry Max cert.pem. That's for the certificate. Then the private key and the root. These are all important that you um, include in here and included through the use key and certificates from local files. So those certificates, if you remember, we populated on our device in that directory, home Perry AWS, and all the certificates are there. That's going to be one of the major differences between AWS and IBM in the way that uh, you configure and authenticate. But um, AWS makes it pretty easy to do this. The other thing you want to do is ensure that enable secure SSL TLS is uh, you've opted in for that. If you don't, you're going to get errors um, on your uh, MQ, on your Node Red uh, instance, and it'll report those errors as being unconnectable.